Thanks for tuning in to Becoming Something, where we promise to keep the conversation honest and real for young adults in their 20s and 30s. Every moment we live is training for a future moment, and that's why we do this podcast, because we want you to be prepared for everything that life is going to throw at you. Our hope with this podcast is that it would help you become all that God desires you to be. So with that in mind, let's jump right in to this week's episode of Becoming Something. What's up, podcast world? It's your boy JP in the podcast studio with the number one hip hop artist in the world, Kathy Davidson. Kathy Harley Davidson. You ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drop that beat. Yeah. Yeah. Your turn. You got to rap. You got freestyle. <laughs> I just can't let them experience that. Because oh, you don't it's do it like, for free. Yeah. You got to pay for that. Unbelievable. How are you? I'm living the dream. This is the best, best day, day ever. ever. It's just the two of us. Just the two of us. Our plot to overthrow you and I. thing has finally happened. You know who sings that happened. song? Just the two of us. I do know the song. I don't know who sings it. I think it was a remake, Is it though. before my time? It's not who I'm thinking sings it. Who sings it? Well, I was you thinking, just asked a question. You don't know the answer. Well, I was thinking Will Smith. I don't know. No, he does sing that song, but it's a remake of a different song. No. Oh. Just the two of us. I feel like it's us. like 70s vibes. Like someone. We can in make your it generation. if we try. Just the two of us. It's for you, Spencer. Nate's out of town. He says that he misses us. I said he the did. feeling is not necessarily mutual. Did he text? But yeah. Should we call him right now? I don't know. Let's try to call Nate real quick. Like, can y'all do that? Is that doable? Or? I think it's not playing their screen. I like send them for loop. They're like, wait, they're wait, stressing. why do we have to do that? Oh, uh, let's just see if he'll answer. How do you feel about him leaving like his job here to go and speak at other places? Uh, it, I mean, it depends. He takes vacation <laughs> days. <laughs> I, th- I do think there's like people that's like, oh, that's what they do. Yeah. You know, like they get paid to come and speak other places. Like, no, not not exactly. Not quite. All right. Yay. It's ringing. I hope he's not like mid talk somewhere. He's in I hope, Kentucky. I hope he is. Okay. If did he doesn't he, answer, he's officially fired. Did he right? um did he just text you a second ago? <laughs> not like a like a minute or two ago. Oh, but it's probably not he's not going to know this number, is he? Will it come up a number or like an address? Oh, it'll come up Harris Creek. Hmm. What a chump, man. Man. I say that if he doesn't I think answer, he's speaking in the we'll evenings. Leave. So he's just would rather ignore our call right now. Dude, I hate that guy. <sighs> Well, I was wondering if you remember what um, this happened this time last year. No, you quit? Important one-year anniversary, yes. Of you leaving? Yes. I didn't know if you marked the day in mourning and, like, in sackcloth and ashes. It it has felt like it's been a year. It's been one year. Grace is one year old. It's felt like 10 minutes. Really? Yeah. It went by really fast. Yeah. I felt like it was a very long year. <laughs> no, man. It, it felt like the answer to a long when awaited prayer. When are you going to hire me back is my question. No. How yeah, long do I, I mean, have to Sometime. Go? I mean, at some point, sure. that's going to happen. Sure. <laughs> you were like, you, come back anytime. We're going to bring you back on. Some, it, for sure. I mean, we'll do that. I'm, let me pray about that. Yeah, just keep praying let about it. Let me pray it. and fast. We'll ask the people. Yeah. You I know. know you've been very sad. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> So your gift yeah. is, what's your spiritual gift? I have a few, right? Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, goodness. What do you think mine are? I'm actually curious. Oh, do you know me man. well enough to know them? Shopping. Oh, my God. Um, spiritual <laughs> gift. Between the two of us, I don't think that's Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Can I ask you really quick before we get into the episode? Uh-huh. You're wearing a Letterman jacket? Yeah. Are those back in style? 100% they are. I'm just confused because I feel like a year ago we were talking about how they weren't in style. No, they're and in. <laughs> letter jackets are legit are in. Okay. But this is a Harris Creek letter jacket that somebody gave me for my birthday, and I rock it. I mean, I it's the one it I'm off, rocking on the on the like um the the pre show. Yeah. You know that the kind of commercial that shows before the podcast. Oh, you're Have wearing you seen, that. Do you ever watch the podcast? Yeah. <laughs> oh <laughs> man, right. unbelievable. Okay, Unbelievable. Back. We're bringing Maddie back, you man. You should. She's great. Unbelievable. Back to my spiritual gifts. Would you hype me up? What gifts do you think I have? 
I don't know. That I'm trying to think. Um, gosh, I know you have some. <laughs> <laughs> Just say some. Okay. Teaching, yeah. teaching, teaching. Yeah, teaching for one. Hey, Kathy is my my wife's Bible study leader, and she loves it. Yeah, I'm She's actually always, teaching this week at Sister. She always sings That's your so praise. Uh, teaching exhortation and hospitality. Exhortation, exhortation. Yeah, that surprises me. Really? I feel like it. Isn't that like just strong encouragement? I think it's like truth telling. With encouragement. Uh, I, I was. Think so. I was like, okay. I thought it was like correction. Oh. But I feel like but I feel like you do do that. It just co- is like costly, yeah. I feel like. Yes. And then hospitality. Yes. Is what? that is that even a, a a spiritual gift? Stop it. No, I did. Like when you go somewhere and they are yes. hospitable, it's like game changer. Do you have the gift of hospitality? I think I do actually. Yeah. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. I know who doesn't, oh but um, gosh. but yeah. no, yes, in our home, yes. which is a better way to say it, in our house, I think I have the gift of hospitality. Like I love when people come over, and I love, but like like when you go somewhere, yeah, like there's like I'll go places, and like when somebody has the gift of hospitality, like it's beautiful. Um, uh, uh, at Liberty, yeah, for yes. example, like you so passion, yep. passion. They those guys, I mean, amazing gift of hospitality. Liberty, uh, when uh, you know, David Nasser is a friend of mine, and just unbelievable. Like you came back from that trip talking about the hospitality. Do we need like, to call that's, him? That's he's like the expert. Can you call David? Since Nate didn't answer, let's see if yeah. David will answer. <laughs> Yay. What's up, dude? Hey, buddy. Hi. You're on the hey, you're on the air with uh, becoming something podcast, so no cussing. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> no profanity. There's millions of people, never. millions and millions of people listening right now. Hey, Kathy, how Hi, are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? The, we nice were, to meet you. We were talking. Yeah. We were talking about the spiritual gift. Thank you for answering. By the yes. way, we called somebody else first, and they didn't answer. Oh my. Uh, oh, so I'm your second no. choice. Thank no, you. no, no, no. But we called Nate because he's not here today, yeah. and and he didn't even answer the phone on his own podcast, which is just you know that's so today's amazing. today's basically his last day. This is going to be one of those stories where it's like, hey, you didn't answer, and then we called David Nasser, yeah. and now he's the co-host from here on out. That would be so, fun. Uh, we were talking about <laughs> hospitality and the importance of that, and I said there's places where you go. And it's like they show there's like a you it's like spiritual. I mean, you experience that. And I remember going to Liberty and uh, experiencing that. But then we went to like lunch at your house and there was a charcuterie board. And I was Mm -hmm. like, but and I was thinking, gosh, you know, almost like a narcissist. I'm like, did they do this just for me? But then in talking to people, I was like, no, we do this all the time. Like, this is how this is just how we host people. Like, this is what they do with their home. This is how they use their home. Like, talk to me about that, man. That's wild. Yeah. Um, well, it's, it's a real personal passion for me. Hmm. Honestly, I, uh, a huge part of my story of taking the gospel seriously was when uh, a church showed up in our life yeah. and um, just showed us intentional, relentless, uh, honestly, just a tsunami of hospitality. And so because I was on the receiving end of it, it became a real value to me. And honestly, as I grew in my faith, I realized that it was more of a divine expectation in Scripture than a suggestion in Scripture, meaning people sometimes will, and I know they mean well, but people will sometimes say uh, something like, man, you have the gift of hospitality. But the truth of the matter is every believer, when you became a believer, when God saved you, was was given the gift of hospitality, meaning the Scripture is clear that it is an expectation that as a believer, you're going to practice hospitality. Now, when you get a lot more practice, when it becomes a big passion point for you, that's what people mean when they say, man, you're really gifted in it. And that's because you're so versed in it. And uh, at my old job at Liberty, when when, 
uh, JP, you know, you and others would come. We would have 88 combos a year. So we got a lot of practice yeah. hosting people. But it was like, um, um, people don't understand. Yeah. Like your mind would be blown if you saw like just the level mm -hmm. of hospitality. And it's like, um, and it's weird. It's not like this uh, like facade of an honor culture kind of thing. It was just like a true, sincere, like we want to host you and display the gospel in the way we're caring for yeah. you. And I think you just hit it. It's it's not about trying to be impressive as in like you are impressed with us and look at all the things we have to give you. It's not about how well you set the table, if you want to put it this way. It's not about the china and the silverware. It's about how well you love a stranger. I mean, if you want to technically get biblically, theologically deep in it, what you receive was actually fellowship and not hospitality because scripture the, its definition of hospitality is actually to the stranger. And what that means is someone who feels welcome at our table, who doesn't necessarily uh, find themselves at this point invited to God's banqueting table yet, meaning invited to the, it's a non-believer that hospitality is towards. And, and so if I'm coming to your house, I've been to your house uh, when we were on tour with the Shanes, you hosted us at your, you know, house JP and, you know, I was already saved. I'm pretty sure the Shanes are saved. Yeah. <laughs> so, so man, there. like, Touch and go. we were coming in and we weren't receiving hospitality. We were receiving fellowship. Oh, I mean, yeah. your That's wife was, interesting. She, you know, she was bringing food to us and we're hanging out on your back deck and, yeah. and you were opening up, you know, like this can of uh, cashews and like, hey, you want to eat? You know, like, <laughs> uh, th th that's not you trying to be a witness to me. Yeah. That's just you loving me. Yeah. But they, but they overlap in one sense. The, the, the word I really love about hospitality, kind of hidden in plain sight, honestly, is the word hospital. Yeah. Inside the word hospitality. Oh, wow. Wow. You know, and it's just been sitting there in plain sight for a yeah. lot of people. Dude. And so, how mind do blown. You become... People's mind are blown. Like, wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> wait, keep, keep <laughs> also, fleshing this out. Also, yeah. also, <laughs> if yeah. you're watching, you're like, dude, this guy just pulled over on the freeway. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he's like, <laughs> he's all in, ready. I, I do, like, in full transparency, I texted him this morning. I said, hey, we might call you in the podcast. So, yeah. he, yeah, he was he ready. Was prepared. <laughs> no, no, keep no, no, going. No. Hospital, I, I, hospital. I, I, again, I'm versed in it. I, I teach a lot on it. Uh, yeah. A lot of times I get invited. It's just m humbling that I would be invited into a culture, whether it's a corporation or a church or whatever, to consult mm. on hospitality. You know, yeah. like uh, this organization just called me the other day and said, hey, do you want to be our chief hospitality officer? And I was wow. like, no, I don't want to be that. I want to help you be that. Yeah. Oh, I want great. everyone to see the incredible opportunity, like your finest hour yeah. as a church people are not going to be impressed. So your finest hour as an organization, uh, or even the, the posture of this podcast, like yeah. it won't be, we were impressed with the bandwidth of its reach, or we were impressed with how cool their backdrop set was, or we were impressed with how polished their music was as a church, or how incredibly uh, like bright the LED screens mm -hmm. were. You know, those things come and go, man. What people will remember yeah. is the emotion of healing. Yeah. Mm hospitable like yeah. like hey i came in wounded and i walked into a hospital yeah and i found healing wow it felt it felt it, it, you know fact, by the way as jacked up as our world is today as hus as much as there is uh, as much hostility as there is in the world today how much brighter can hospitality be now than ever yeah. before and, yeah. and so uh, obviously you can wind me up about it man <laughs> like you don't have to give me any heads up yeah. you can just call me and go talk about hospitality yeah, yeah. And it is such a passion to me. Yeah. And 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 right now there's a there's a book out. It's I think sitting on number one at the New York Times bestseller. It says it's on hospitality. Uh, it's about this incredible restaurant, actually, um, Eleven Madison in New York. I mean, I've been to it. I love it. I love the book, by the way. I I highly recommend the book. But in a secular way, again, it's all about making an impression for the sake of the one making the impression. In the Christian world, we're not making a hospitality so that you would think we are great. We're making a we're we're great. We're we're posturing ourselves and loving and serving. This is a divine appointment so that people would think God is great. Yeah. yeah. Were you? Were and you, so He's front and center. Yeah. He's yeah. the head of the table, yeah. not us. Were you? Were you born here? Were you born in the states? <laughs> No, I'm I was thinking you weren't, man. You I'm, know I'm not, dude. I, I forgot. I really, I legit forgot. I forgot. But were you? Where were you born? 
I can't. I was born in Iran. Okay, because here's uh, why. Here's why I ask. Yeah. Oh, here's why I ask because <laughs> she's so uncomfortable. <laughs> why? Why is that weird? I just feel like you don't ask people that. Why? Yeah, I was I thinking. I have literally been the Harris. <laughs> I know oh, he shared a story. You I just know. forgot. Exactly. I forgot. I would. Okay. That's what I was thinking. I was like, I don't think he was born here. <laughs> but here's why. Because like in the Middle East, man, it, it's like if you like yes. compliment somebody, yes. if you're like, hey, I like your goat. Like you're leaving with that goat, dude. If that's you're like, right. you like I, I, I was walking. Country. I was in Jordan walking through Petra. And I met That's somebody, right. and and they were like, come. I mean, they were like, stay. They were come stay with me, and I was like, I don't understand what's happening right now. I think I'm getting kidnapped. Yeah. And they're like, no, no, like come stay. You we right. have you can 100%. sleep. You can sleep in my bed. You can stay here, eat at my table. Listen, let me go kill my my last calf and feed yeah. you. And I was like, what is happening? I don't. And this is not like, oh, I listen to your podcast. I'm a straight up stranger walking yeah, down man. the road. Yes, like hey, and bro, that's like different. Just to echo what you said, I mean, the the very model of perfected hospitality mm -hmm. is from a Middle Easterner. His name is Jesus. Yeah. So yes. A lot of people know, listening to your podcast, but Jesus wasn't like a white Republican right. who's <laughs> going to be on Fox News tonight. <laughs> <laughs> They look like Duck Dynasty. He's more from my neck of the woods than y'all's neck of the woods. He's more Camel Dynasty. He might have kind of looked like Duck Dynasty. Dynasty. Yeah, man. Don't you see, yeah. like... Even the Israelite culture was so, like, they so emphasized hospitality. Like, it was yeah. a sin to not yeah. be hospitable. Totally. It was very That's important, right. even from the beginning. Um, and it goes back to your your idea of, or what you're talking about, why we are hospitable is not about ourselves, but so that people would see God that's in us. Right. And I really think that's even true from the beginning of the pages of scripture. They were blessed to be a blessing to other people, right? So that the, the foreigners would know that God of the Israelite people is Yahweh, yeah. is God. A absolutely. Preach. I mean, come on. I mean, seriously, it, 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 the first time it shows up, yeah. I mean, as far as the word, it's mm -hmm. in Leviticus. Mm -hmm. And then, and then over and over and over again in scripture, hospitality appears. As a matter of fact, uh, I am right now in the beginning process of talking to a, a, a local church about possibly being um, the, the pastor. All right. Okay. And so we, we had a meeting the other day and it was interesting. I pulled out first Timothy three to, because it was the elders meeting yeah. and we, they were talking about like expectations on both sides. And so when they went to me and they go, well, what is your expectation of us as elders? I said, well, I mean, I don't want to go lower than or higher than the Bible. Mm -hmm. So I pulled out 1 Timothy 3. And what's interesting is one of the qualifications for an overseer, one of the qualifications for an elder is literally hospitality. I mean, mm -hmm. people know self-control, husband of one wife. People know, you know, ability to teach God's word. Those are like the well-known. Mm -hmm. But what's, what's hidden right there is you want to show me spiritual maturity. Wow to step into a place of a life worthy of imitation, not a perfection, but mm -hmm. imitation. Mm -hmm. You want to show me an elder hospitality. Wow. And so I asked, I asked them, I just boomeranged it right back and said, how often do you host in your home lost people? Yeah. How often does the neighborhood see you as the place where like during COVID, it was the safe place to come, mm -hmm. not yeah. just for toilet paper, right. but for life and yeah. for questions and for, po I mean, just for, you know, and so, you know, again, spiritual maturity isn't about necessarily knowing God's word and, you know, and it is in one part, but it's so much bigger than that is, is, is the way you live out God's word. And over and over again in scripture, you know, scripture literally says in Hebrews 13, like, do not neglect yeah. hospitality. Yeah. And what happens is some people give themselves a pass by saying, well, you know, someone like JP or Kathy or Nasser, like you guys are gifted in it. I just don't have that gift. And the truth is, it's just like evangelism. The, there's no such thing as the gift of evangelism. God's called all of us to evangelism. Yeah, yeah that's challenging. And no one me. gets saved through hospitality. Hospitality yeah. is not salvation. It's the means to the end, yeah, right? Yeah. It's, the, it's the highway. It's the bridge by which we earn the right to share the gospel. And again, for oh. me... I'm a product of it. Yeah. Like I became a Christian because of hospitality on fire. Wow. You know? How, how and, so? And what, yeah. do you, what do you mean by that? Very personal to me. How, how did you, what do you mean you became a Christian by hospitality on fire? 
Yeah, man. And and so I was born in Iran. I don't know if you know that, Jake. Yeah, I do I now. I know now. I know. I know. I'm surprised by it, but I know, I, I get it now. <laughs> Nasser, is, that's, was, uh, that's Iranian? Stop. Oh, my God. Truly? Yes. Stop. I'm Persian, yes. Okay. And when I was uh, when I was nine years old, the Iranian revolution happened in my country. Wow. And so re- I call it religion gone wrong. Uh, we saw tens of thousands of people lose their life when the Ayatollah Khomeini and his zealots took over our country. And and honestly, we weren't very devout as a Shiite Muslim family. Uh, but when the revolution happened, those were my first memories of religion. And, and what I remember about religion taking over our country was not hospitality. It was hostility. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I can go on and on about like the things that happened, the traumatic things that happened when the Ayatollah Khomeini took over our country. And mm. we as a family were forced to escape running wow. for our lives. And so I know not a lot of nine-year-olds say stuff like I hated God, you know, uh-huh. when I was nine or whatever. Yeah. Most nine-year-olds think stuff like, I don't know, should I eat this crayon? Or right. whatever. Yeah. But I was nine <laughs> yeah. when I decided I hated God wow. because I saw people wear the name of God yeah. Yeah. and lead worship, not with a guitar in their hand, but with a gun in their hand. Uh-huh. Wow. And, and, and in, in their definition of leading worship was like, we're going to terrorize you towards religion. And, and, and that's when church became state in Iran, wow. right? Wow. Like the government took over and it was a religious government. Mm-hmm. And so we escaped from Iran and we were stuck in Europe for nine months uh, trying to make it to America. And at that time, nobody was allowing Iranians into America because mm-hmm. People were watching on TV how Iranians were going through the American Revolution, how they had held 54 Americans hostage in the American wow. embassy in Iran, wow. yeah. how they were burning the American flag, calling America the great Satan. Wow. And so we were from the wrong place at the wrong time, yeah. trying to make it here. And we just couldn't make it. And after about nine months of exhausting all these ideas, uh, my mom got us together one day and had what she called an American idea. And she showed us a picture of... Of, of, of a white guy with a beard and a mullet, you know? And she said, this is Jesus. Wow. And since we want to go to America, we ought to pray to him since he's American and ask what? him to let us into his country. Dude, I've never it. heard this. I've heard your story. I've never heard this before in my yeah, life. Man. And that's where God is bigger than bad theology or at least geography. Right? Or, or a haircut. Pray. Yeah. We prayed the name of Jesus yeah. in a prayer and asked him to let us into his country. Stop it. And a week later, we, uh, we were coming to America. And we moved to America, but here's what's weird. And this is going to hit home for you guys. Some of your audience might not know this, but like this, you'll get it. We moved to America, bro. But we don't just move to America. We moved to Colleen, Texas. Wow. What? Wow. You know Colleen. Wow. Dude, a lot of people don't know. Uh, Shane, Largest army base in the world. Shane Everett has Fortune. a Colleen story, too. That's where really? he became a Christian. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. We've talked about this before. It's such a cool thing. But so I come to... I come to Colleen, Texas, because my dad was military. He had taken flight training yeah. in, uh, you know, in, in uh, Fort Hood. And so can you imagine in patriotic Texas, wow. military town, Texas, small town, Texas, yeah. we parachute in and I've got the wrong haircut, the wrong clothes, the wrong language, the wrong everything. Uh. I'm a complete fish out of water. Plus, it's kind of like being Hamas these days. Wow. Right? And coming into the American yeah. Yeah. And so, man, we come in and talk about hostility. I mean, I, I call it wedgie waiting to happen. Oh, you know, wow. so like I got, you know, so like I come in and I'm just this outcasted kid. And so for years and years, I remember thinking like, if we're here, the official word was political asylum, but we were there, we're in America as refugees, yeah. right? And so if we're here for refuge, mm-hmm. the last thing this place feels is refuge, safe. And so for years and years, that was me. I was this outcasted kid who just ate his lunch alone every day, you know, Ugh. got, you know, bullied by the kid that everybody else bullied, <laughs> one kid below him in the food chain. And that was me until my freshman year in uh, high school was about to start. And um, and my dad, feeling pity for me and sorry for me, took me to the mall and gave me kind of this extreme makeover. Honestly, like cl- new clothes, new haircut, new shoes, like this, just to try to help me blend in. Mm-hmm. And my high school years pivoted, and I went from like the kid that nobody talked is that, to like, is that, learning in high school. Is that why you wear that cap? Because it's the it. one he got you way back then. You're still rocking it. You're like, I just want to remember that moment. <laughs> yes. How did you know, JP? <laughs> this is the cap. You are my next level did. today. <laughs> <laughs> control yourself <laughs> all right sorry sorry <laughs> no no it's totally good it's totally good 
Anyway, so my, uh, so my high school years, man, became these, like, I call it just a, a, a sad display of insecurity. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you know, scripture said, what says, uh, what good is it for a man to gain the whole world, but to forfeit his soul? And that was me. My high school years, I went from the kid nobody wanted to hang with to the kid who learned how to end up at the right lunch, lunchroom table, how to dump the right girl right before she could dump me, mm-hmm. how to be cold, to be perceived as cool, you know, and all that. And so... On paper, it looked like my dad had helped me. Yeah. yeah. And on paper, it looked like everything was better. But at least when I was a nobody, I was mean. Yeah. But all I'd become is just this kid who, you know, honestly, the opposite of Romans 12, 1 and 2. I yeah. conformed yeah. To, to the, the world. patterns of this world yeah. so that I could blend. Yep. And I, it, it was just, I was tired of being alone and being lonely, you know. And so even if it was fabricated friendships, I took it. Yeah. So I graduated from high school popular in high school but pretty still emotionally bankrupt Hmm. and uh two months after high school one night i was in the car with a buddy of mine and we were smoking weed together Hmm. we were smoking a joint and we're passing it back and forth and he invited me to church (laughs) what (laughs) he's like hey man hey man you gotta come check out this place (laughs) kathy just snorted uh she's done it many times so far many many times this morning so. Yeah. And so my buddy invited me to church, but I didn't want to go because yeah. I thought you can't wear you can't wear hats. And my dad had given me this. Hat. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I knew I didn't want to break my dad. I knew oh. it. I knew it. <laughs> no. Anyway. So. So it's funny. Like the first time I got invited to church, it was completely for social reasons. Yeah. yeah. You know, a pothead buddy of mine named the five prettiest <laughs> girls from my high school told yeah. me they were going. And, wow. You know, so. And so this is the part I wanted to get to okay. about hospitality. And so I told my buddy, I mean, we're sitting in the car. It's like five minutes before midnight. And I told my buddy, I was like, dude, I'm not going to church. I saw religion destroy my country when I was a kid. I have no re- yeah. I have no interest. If I'm anything, it's like quasi Shiite Muslim by heritage. And we're not even that much that. And, and my buddy kept insisting in the car. And so just to get him off my back. On a Saturday night, I walked in the house. My buddy followed me in, and I went down the hallway, and I knocked on my parents' bedroom door to ask him if I can go to church, thinking my dad's going to say no, you know, immediately. So I go down there, man, and I'm, I'm knocking on my parents' bedroom door, and I said, hey, mom and dad. I'm, this is like with the door closed in the hallway. I said, hey, uh, it's midnight. I'm home. I'm safe. I said, my friend wants to know something, so I told him I'd ask you. I know you're going to say no. Just say no really loud so he'll leave me alone. Yeah. He wants to know if tomorrow I can go with him to church, a Christian church. Yeah. But instead of saying no, Kathy, my dad's kind of quiet for about three seconds. Uh-huh. You know, he's like, he's in bed. He's kind of, I guess, waking up. Yeah. And then he yelled through the door. He goes, are you wearing the hat I give you? No, he didn't. Say that. <laughs> he, he, my dad yells really loud. He goes, he goes, what is the name of it? And he's literally What's the name, the of, the name church? of the church? Yeah. yeah. And what I didn't know was that two weeks before that Saturday night, when my pothead buddies invited me to church, these people had shown up at my dad's restaurant from this church. Wow. A guy named Aubrey wow. Edwards, who was the music minister of this church. Back then, they didn't call them worship pastors. And, and a couple of other church members. And they'd been sitting there eating at my dad's restaurant. And they'd seen how my dad was shorthanded on wait staff. Yeah. And instead of complaining about the bad service, because it was like lunch rush, he was shorthanded. Yeah. These people quietly stood up, rolled up their sleeves, and waited on tables at my dad's restaurant. Wow. What? And God used that hospitality. Wow. Crazy. God used that kindness. Was to it the same church then? Heart. Yeah, man. So listen. So then the next day they came back again and they served my dad wow. for three hours at his restaurant for free as wow. just volunteers. And then Aubrey invited my dad, my military Iranian dad, to choir practice. What? And so my dad went on a Tuesday night Stop. because, again, kindness yeah. is a wow. superpower. My dad went to choir <laughs> practice and then Aubrey got out a piece of paper at the end of choir practice and said, this is my friend, Mr. Nasser. And he needs help at his restaurant. And I, there's a piece of paper going around. And I want everybody to sign up for shifts. What? And you're going to serve at his restaurant for free. It'll be, listen, it'll be such a fun thing. You're going to love it. If you're going to be in the choir, you're going to be there at the Stop restaurant. It. What? And for two weeks, these Christians had loved on my dad. Had, had just shown up and shown hospitality on our turf. 
Wow. Right? That is crazy. And so fast forward two weeks later, and I'm asking my dad if I can go to church. And instead of saying no, there are like 1,100 churches in right. Birmingham, Alabama. That's where we live. Yeah. Right? This, yeah. you know, the buckle of the Bible belt. Mm-hmm. But instead of saying no, my dad says, what is the name? And my buddy yells out, it's the name of the church. Because he's you know, standing there at the door. And it's the exact same church. Oh, wow. my goodness. I mean, that'll make you a Calvinist, bro. All Dude. right. <laughs> and so my dad says, you can go there, but only there. And wow. so I'm telling you, the only reason wow. I got to go to church. Wow. The reason I got to not too long ago be in your church at Harris Creek, JP. Yeah. With a microphone in my hand, speaking, preaching. The reason I got to be at your church is because the church came to us. Wow. Mm. Yeah. And so... We, we, Ooh. and then man, it was up for grabs. Like, so then I went to church, they saw this kid show up and for the next eight Monday nights in a row, they came to my house at this thing called visitation and they just witnessed to me Dude. and it was kindness. And it was, it's the fruit of the spirit, right? Yeah. Like hospitality puts the fruit, the evidence yeah. of the Holy spirit in and through your life on display. Wow. And it was just undeniable. And so I became a Christian because I went from, I like to say, traumatic hostility to traumatic hospitality. Man. And man, they were so loving. It was traumatizing. I mean, it was dumbfounding. There's your book. Tell uh, me you're working. Hey, tell me you're working on this book, man. The hospitality book. book, (laughs) It's called called Jumping Jumping Through Fires. Jumping Through Fires. uh, But does it it have the hospitality angle? No, that's a good point. That's I mean, what I'm I've saying. Been, I'm talking. Really, I'm talking hostility yeah. to hospitality. Yeah, that's, that's the good. that's the name, man. That's Let's the go. Line, yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, Pub- and God good. And, and, and again, people people overthink it, man. Yes. They're like, how do I win my next door neighbor to the yeah. Lord who's a Muslim? Yeah. yeah, invite him to your house. Yeah. Like, like sit at the be table, man. And don't put pork chops in front of them because they're Muslims. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. Or like, but but beyond thinking, like. The don't, grass don't overthink cutting, it. Cut yeah. their grass, yes. man. Show yes. up and be nice. Like, never miss a great opportunity mm. to just ooze love, joy, yeah. patience, kindness, self control. Yeah. You know, and 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 I'm just telling you, like, we keep saying we're on the verge of awakening. We keep yeah. saying we're on the verge of a revival. Yeah. And I don't. I I think it's a forefront of a lot of things, but I think it actually is college students. It actually is young people because. They've decided that mm. they're going to be, they can call it inclusive. They can call it open hearted. They've decided that they're going to love their neighbor. Yeah. Wow. And so it's not going to come from you on stage or me on stage yeah. or the right song sung by Brandon Lake. It's going to come in the streets, in yes. the neighborhood wow. when we are incarnational and Kathy decides mm. every Tuesday night of my yeah. life, JP yeah. decides. Every you know Sunday morning brunch before church in my house, I have decided that this is a this is a joy. I, you know, hospitality is a divine expectation. Mm-hmm. I, I like to say about it that you know it is a duty because it's an appointment from God, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And a delight. Yeah. And man, what does it look like? You know. By the way, I invite people to my house all the time that are believers and non-believers. But when I have someone coming to my house who's not a believer, Mm -hmm. I'm giddy. Mm -hmm. I'm just excited. Like, oh, they're coming. I cannot wait. Like, so that's when you're like, how fat can the steak be? You know, Mm -hmm. how good can the conversation get? Yeah. And that's when you're laughing and stuff like that. And then I put on this hat. I don't know if I told you that. (laughs) The hat hat. your dad said, lucky hat. Man, that's a good word, dude. I love it, man. That's so good. Yeah. I didn't know about the praying to the mullet Jesus that either. Is... Let's go. I feel like <laughs> hospitality gets limped in with like the, it's like a B version spiritual gift. You know, it's like teaching and prayer. Like there's all these things that are viewed as higher and hospitality is like more of the weak sauce. Like it's like the not church was born on it. Lydia, man. It's like that's... important. Yeah. It changes lives. It can bring yeah. people from death to life. Totally. Like, so when we were at Liberty, um, you know, because you brought that up, we had 88 convocations a year. And sometimes it was a pulpit. Like if Jonathan Pecluda's coming, it's a pulpit. It's not a platform. I mean, that dude's not going to, he's going to preach. He's going to open up the Bible. He's going to preach. By the way, we would violently guard that pulpit. Mm-hmm. 
theology, life worthy of imitation, no prosperity. God, like, we would violently. Then we didn't have lower standards, but when it was a platform, we would have people come who didn't share our faith. Wow. You know? So Jordan Peterson would come, Bernie Sanders would come, all these yeah. people would come. I'm telling you, man, like I would be so excited Aww. because when we would have someone come who didn't share our faith, because yeah. I would think it's going to be on, man. Like this person's going to come and they're typically coming in where from social media to whatever, they're typically a highly visible leader mm -hmm. and they're typically getting a lot of hostility. Wow. And so that just means in all the darkness, man, we can just, it's our kindness. You know, yeah. the, the Romans 2 says yeah. kindness leads to repentance. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we can be a witness. And so our goal was death by a thousand paper cuts. Like we are going to, at every nook and cranny, show that they are, they matter to God. Yeah. And because they matter to God, they matter to us. Wow. Right. And because, because they're, because uh, I went to Rwanda one time and I met this pastor and she gave me the best definition I've ever heard of honor. Hmm. Um, uh, she said she was a pastor of a church that um, she was Tootsie and she was a pastor of a church full of children and families that were Hutu. Wow. And the Hutu had murdered her parents and wow. put a huge gash in her face. Wow. I'm standing there in Rwanda with her. Jeff Foxworthy had hosted us of all people. He, he's a you know, deep believer who loves what God has done in Rwanda wow. through the genocide, bringing revival to that nation. And Je Jeff knew her and he introduces me to her. And uh, we're standing in her church. It's just full of children and all this. And, and Jeff says to her, please say to the translator, Please say to my friend David, who well, I just met her, why you you are the pastor of a church, you know, of a, of the very people who murdered your family. And she said, if they are expensive to God, hmm. they are expensive to me. Wow. And the translator said, I'm so sorry, that definition is bad. Lost through translation. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's the single greatest, that nothing got lost in translation. Yeah. So I'm saying that to say, and we're about to gear up for another election cycle, right? Like, whoo, here we yeah. go. You know, kindling, country on fire. Yeah. Like people just hostile towards one another. We're about to, we're about to gear up with, so in, a, in a world full of everyone pointing fingers yeah. and everything, what does it look like to see our neighbor who doesn't agree with us as mm -hmm. expensive to God? Yeah, man, that's good. And if they are expensive to God, they're expensive to us. That right? is a word. When you... When you did a, the, um, you were at Liberty, y'all had like nine H's or seven H's or something? Yeah. What, what? We are eight H's. Eight, yeah. eight H's? Is that what it was? That's for another podcast, bro. That's yeah. a long. <laughs> <laughs> but, but one of them's honor and one of them is hospitality, right? It is. Yeah. yeah that's, what I'm, it is. that's what I'm going off. And humble. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's uh, humility, holiness, uh, health, honor, yeah. honesty, yeah. hospitality, yeah. health. You know, so they were. They, we, we didn't call them values. We called them convictions. Yeah. That's good. And we were not trying to hire people who, would willing, who were willing to do that in order to be a part of the thing. It, it wasn't what they did. It was the essence. It was the posture yeah. by, the, by yeah. which they did whatever they did. Yeah. And so we were looking for people who shared those convictions with us. Like they yeah. didn't have to have like eight H's yeah. tattooed. You know? yeah, yeah. They, they, just, they just went, man, me too. Yeah. I really think this is important. And, uh, and so when you, when you have that on your team, you know, the further out it gets in the layers, yeah. I would say to someone, I'd say, you know, honestly, I don't even know what you do in our organization. Sometimes when I would interview somebody, I'd go, you're doing accounting in one of our departments with hundreds of employees. Yeah. I don't even know what that means. Like, honestly, like as the right. leader, yeah. that's five layers away. I don't pretend to, you're better than this than me. And that's yeah. why we need you. Right. Yeah. However, whatever you're doing, I want you to do it with hustle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're doing, I want you to do it with honor. Yeah. Whatever you're doing, I want you to do it with hospitality. Right, right. And okay. then so we would kind of give them the H's. And so it was yeah. a big it was a big thing. I am actually writing a book about that. I'm yeah. writing a book about vision. Yeah. And and then how a part of vision is your values. Yeah. You know, coming more and more into fruition. Well, and and I share I share some of those in that book that I'm working well, on. When it comes out, let's bring yeah. you back and go through those. But man, you hey, you're a great leader. I mean, I've said that. I said that behind your back. Yep. I was like, that dude's yes. a great leader. So thank you for sharing your story with us. Yes, and, man, I'm so inspired toward yes. hospitality right now. It's awesome, man. 
Oh, yeah, well, thank you. I love you. I love I love what, what God's doing in and through you, JP. Are, are you parked on the freeway right now? Are you just parked on the freeway right now? Like there's He's like cars piling no. up behind you. <laughs> we we have we have we have some guests, yeah. out of town guests that are here. My my in laws are yeah. here. Okay. And I ran down the street to my wife gave me a little thing, and so I ran down the street to grab some stuff, and then I just <laughs> I literally pulled in yeah. uh, at this little thing because. Because I thought I'd get back by the time, yeah, but it also it. gives me better Wi-Fi right there. here. I, I love it, man. I live, I live in a bunch of trees, you know. So <laughs> Let's go. bad reception. So come on, I'm pulled in at the at the uh, tennis club. Dude, let's go, <laughs> bro. Oh thank gosh. you. Thanks thank for answering. You. Thanks for answering so the call. Good. Thank you for having the conversation. That I was, uh, you know, that's amazing. So, so helpful. I'm inspired. And when I was a teenager, I read A Call to Die, and it yeah. was profound in my life. So thank you for just a lifetime of faithfulness. Did you write that too, A Call to Die? Yeah. Man, you got books out there, books on books, jumping through the fire. <laughs> it was like a devotional. Call to Die. It was. So it was. What yeah. else? Call to Die. I was at Passion 99. Come on. And Beth Moore, uh, who's had just a, a, a profound impact in my life. Yes. You know, uh, Beth Moore wa was uh, preaching. And it was like a morning session. Uh -huh. And she said the words, a call to die, based out of Galatians 2.20. Yeah. And everybody got up and walked out for lunch. And I sat there and I just started journaling. And that journal entry was the beginning wow. of the crucified life and eventually became a 40-day devotional. So, so wow. God gave me that through, uh, through Beth. Oh, so Dude, cool. you're a beast, man. Man. Hey, I'll call you later. Thank you for answering so much. Thank you. This I love you great. both. Love you too, dude. So fun to be with you. you. Yeah, man. So good. Appreciate you. I, I'm sending you this hat. <laughs> I want it, dude. I want it. I want it. All right. See you guys. Talk to you Bye. later. Bye. Ugh. Man. That was so good. That was like a lot better than I thought it was going to be for just a random phone call. I mean, he was ready. Dude, he was ready. That's and he's the dude is a beast leader. I, leader. I'm like, I've always thought that. I'm like, he's it. a great leader. And he already corrected us at the beginning of this podcast. We were talking about how some people have the gift of hospitality and some don't. Yeah, and I don't think I was. was like, I don't think I was talking about that. But you, oh. you said that for sure. He corrected you. I'm pretty sure you actually, but it's fine. <laughs> That's I, awesome. I love that. I think it's so, so, so good. We all have the responsibility to be hospitable to show people Jesus. So yeah, the is. gospel travels yes. on hospitality, and I, I do. I was thinking about Lydia, who was. She sold purple garments yep. and hosted yep. Priscilla and Aquila, right, in her so. home. Uh -huh. And then the church is born. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's like, how can we do a better job of inviting, you know, Ramadan uh, was started recently. Uh -huh. And just like, what does it look like? Even sometimes it, hospitality may be going without a meal Ooh. with with a friend from another religion saying, hey, teach me more about what you believe and before I show totally. you my Jesus, like, I want to understand, like, what, what is your faith foundation? What is it? What do you believe? Tell me about your God and let me, and let me tell you about mine. Yeah. But that's awesome. You're earning man. the right to show them Jesus by like showing it with your word, your actions. It's crazy. Those yeah. people had, had literally served, so wild. served others, you know, at his dad's restaurant. And you don't think of that as hospitality. Like yeah. I think of hospitality. People come to me right. and to my house, but it's he gave serving. so many examples of like, no, you're just serving. You're meeting needs. Yeah. Come on. Ugh. Hey, if you're listening to this, you're still with us. Identify a need around you and yes. meet it in the name of Jesus. So good. We love you guys. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to Becoming Something, where we promise to keep the conversation honest and real for young adults in their 20s and 30s. Every moment we live is training for a future moment, and that's why we do this podcast, because we want you to be prepared for everything that life is going to throw at you. Our hope with this podcast is that it would help you become all that God desires you to be. To find out more, visit becomingsomething.com.